Hello, brothers and sisters. Today is August 12th, 2019. A few days ago on August 10th, I shared a vision I had from God. And what I saw was two swords crossed with the blade parts of the swords pointing up. And I found out that it means ready to fight. And it also means war. And an example of the two cross swords is it's used as a symbol in heraldry and also it's a symbol of a battle. Well, I'm sure by now that most of you know that there's been a lot of vicious attacks on certain YouTube channels by people being used by the enemy and they're attacking channels who believe fully in the true gospel of grace and they're also attacking sisters and brothers who god is giving prophetic dreams visions and words of knowledge to for his purposes which are to lead people to the cross to the true gospel of grace and to warn the world of the things that are coming and I'm one of the persons that is being attacked. Almost 20 years ago, I was crying out to God and I was camping in the deep woods. And I was just looking up at the sky and I was pouring my heart out to God and telling him how alone I felt. And I was asking him why there seemed to be no one else who cared about the things that I did. And I asked him, why am I here, God? And I was extremely broken and sad. And I felt like I had no purpose. Well, suddenly, I, a gigantic ball of light just appeared out of the sky and it looked like a giant soap bubble. And God spoke to me and told me, you are not alone, there are others like you. It is a gathering time. And I felt the most powerful, holy love that I've ever felt in my entire life. So much so that I couldn't, so much so that I couldn't speak and I was weeping from the pure love that I felt. And then I just walked over to where my tent was and I was facing the trees and I was just in absolute awe of what I had just experienced. And then suddenly an enormous powerful wind came through the trees and it blew through my entire soul. Not just my body, but my entire soul. And I felt that same powerful holy love again the love and power of God. And then I heard him say to me, See, I am still with you. Brothers and sisters, God has gathered us together in the last days, in these last moments, for such a time as this. And God is still with us. He is surrounding us with his love and his power and his mighty angels. And no weapon formed against God's children who believe in the one whom he sent, Jesus, will prosper. And we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. We are victorious forever in Christ Jesus. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you.
Sure, our flesh can be hurt, our emotions and feelings. but our spirits are eternally secure and safe in Christ Jesus forever when we trust and believe in Jesus alone for our eternal salvation. God knows those that are his, and his sheep hear his voice, and no one will pluck us from his hand. No one, no demon from the pits of hell is ever going to stop the Lord Almighty and His plans. We all need to just look at Him and know and trust always that He is always with us. Have faith, brothers and sisters. Keep your armor on tightly and pray. Prayer is powerful and our armor is powerful. The enemy is already defeated. And now the enemy's plans are to convince people that we have to work for our salvation and that God's grace and love isn't sufficient enough for us to be truly saved. The enemy, the enemy and his servants want to bring people back under the law that Jesus fulfilled on the cross. And he wants to bring people back under bondage. And if he succeeds in doing that, that makes people completely in, ineffective for God to lead others to eternal salvation in Christ Jesus. You can easily tell who has been set free from the bondage of the law and who hasn't. You can easily tell by just watching the difference in how they speak. And the Holy Spirit will let you know. He will, he will nudge you. Those who believe in the true gospel of grace and put their trust and faith in Christ alone for their salvation speak in love. And those who believe in works for their salvation always speak with pride, judgment, and hate. And Jesus said, we will know them by their fruit. They all seem to have a bitterness, a hardened heart, and pride. Pray for them, brothers and sisters. And then dust your feet off and keep going. And just trust God with them. Don't let them distract you from why we are here. A few years ago, right before Hurricane Irma hit here, I was a bit nervous about the hurricane. Well, on the morning of the day the hurricane was supposed to hit us here, upon awakening, I saw and heard Jeremiah 1520. So I find it interesting that God chose to give me this scripture right before a hurricane hit. And I believe that the reason he did that was not just to comfort and tell me he would protect me from the storm, but also from exactly what is happening right now on YouTube and in this world. And I believe that the final layer of why he gave me this particular scripture has to do with the rapture and being rescued just in time. And I believe this applies to all of God's children that believe and trust in Christ alone for their salvation. When you just believe and trust in Christ alone for your salvation and you seek him, he reveals his grace and love to you in such amazing ways. And that is what causes us to produce such good fruit in this world. Because we understand how much he truly loves us. And we want others to understand his love and grace also. And it's his Holy Spirit that leads us to this truth. And Jesus is the only way 
truth, and life. And apart from him, we can do nothing. So I'm just going to read Jeremiah 15:20 to you all now. And I hope that it strengthens you and encourages you. And I will make thee unto this people a fenced brazen wall. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Abba, Father, I ask in Jesus' holy, beautiful name that you would pour out your spirit on all of your children until we are overflowing in your power, in your peace, in your joy. So that your will can be done through us on earth as it is in heaven. And I ask in Jesus' name, Father, that you would break down every wall, every lie, every fear that the enemy has or is trying to instill in our hearts and our minds. Father, I ask that you would give us all the spiritual eyes and ears to know who we are in Christ Jesus so that we can be so that we can be effective warriors for you God here on earth. And Father, I ask that you would give us the boldness to speak the truth of the gospel of grace, even in great adversity. I ask, Father, in Jesus' name, for you to break every stronghold in your children brought on by the enemy so that we can know our identity in Christ Jesus and put the enemy under our feet where he belongs. Father, in Jesus' name, I just ask that everyone here listening to this message who is suffering from emotional or physical pain, for them to be healed right now and filled with the glory of your love and your peace and your joy And I thank you, Father. Thank you for your love that never stops searching for us to come and rest in your arms. You're so beautiful, Father. Jesus, you're so beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. We love you, Father. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for every blessing and for all that you are and all that you have done. And no matter what we see going on around us, God, we trust you. So we can let it all go and just look at you. Help us let it all go and just look at you, God. And make our path straight. In Jesus' name, I pray this, Father. And I thank you. And there's one more thing that I'd like to share, brothers and sisters. About a week ago, I was just laying down with my little boy, who's 98% nonverbal and was diagnosed with leukodystrophy. And we were just snuggling each other. Well, in his room on the wall, there's a picture of Jesus. 
based off the Shroud of Turin lines. And he suddenly sat up and looked at it and started smiling really big. And then he looked at me and he said, Be ready. I love you, brothers and sisters. We're almost home. Hold fast and keep standing in faith in Christ alone.